Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode of Warno. This time we actually have something really cool. This is an SDL League game played between Sunter and Wolf755M. This is actually a tiebreaker from the group stages to get into the finals of the Division 4 SD League. So, pretty cool battle here, pretty high stakes for these guys. Um, keep in mind, Division 4 is sort of like the newbie league or uh, people who don't play the game a lot. So, you're not going to see like the crazy high-end micro of the Division 1 players or even Division 2, but... I thought this would be a, a fun little thing, and I reached out to SD League, and he said, "Yeah, this is a this would be a really cool game to cast, as not many people cast the Division Four or Division Three games, and uh, this is you know fairly high stakes in terms of a fun little tournament that uh, SD League puts together." So we have here on the right Sunter. He is playing the eleventh ACAV. And I will put a picture of his decklist, at least the decklist I could find on the Discord. And then on the, or I, hopefully I said on the right here we have Sunter. And then on the left we have Wolf755M playing the 101st Airborne. I'll put a picture of the deck up also right here for you guys to see. And then I'll put, I'll copy the decklist descriptions or uh, the import files in the link below. Keep in mind, these deck lists are prior to the reinforcement pack number two and the patch that came along with it. So things have changed since, uh, since this battle and some of the things in the deck might be a little bit different. Um, what I've shown picture-wise here is what is in the game currently. So I don't know if there were a couple little minor tweaks going into that. But uh, <laughs> some air battles going on right away, and there was some nasty stuff that happened very early on. If you caught that, uh, unfortunately, it looked like it was Wolf 755M's green berets in the middle uh, in their Chinook helicopter were destroyed, and that is a huge blow to Wolf 755M. Uh, pretty pretty devastating there because if I if I look at his deck list um, I, I can see that those guys are 165 points with the Chinook the leader also 165 points with the Chinook so that is quite a devastating blow early on you'll notice in these lower division games um, sort of a, a lot of what you would, what you would expect to see out of newer players Sort of moving into position and then not really doing anything with it. You can see on the left here that Wolf, he has his sniper in place. He has his arrow rifles, uh, the dragon over here, not really doing anything. He should notice that there is nothing really in play over here. Uh, if you look at Wolf's perspective, he can just see the middle. And then Sunter... If you look at his perspective, all he can see is just some forces in the middle over there. So, these guys really need to probe the enemy a little bit more and see if they can uh, find the front line of the enemy and find any weaknesses in their line. So just continuing in the center, uh, Sunter over here has a pretty good position and if he can take these trees and these buildings over here with his engineers, his Schutzen, that'd be pretty good. He's also probing up the middle, and if he can take that Stinger out with those dismount troopers, that'll be pretty fantastic. He's brought up his Kiowa. Does have some Hellfires, but mostly that Kiowa really, really good for spotting as it is a recce vehicle. Now, uh, he has smoked his Bradley early, which is pretty good because his Phantom is going in for an attack run. Oh, that was actually really good on the Phantom. It not only uh, destroyed the Bradley, but it got the Kiowa too. So nice two for one kill there. Um, you know they're they're trading pretty well. Wolf over here moving an Apache up did get a hit on the Command Abrams over there, but Sunter doing pretty well at 
moving his command abrams out um was pretty impressed that he pre-smoked his bradley but maybe he smoked it a little too soon he is dropping off some shoots in over here and then he's doing a little probe over here with these uh strife i am not fully um familiar with these deck lists yet and as i've mentioned in previous videos still very much learning the game and uh, that's why I thought casting Division 4 game would be pretty good because I'm probably at the same stage of the game as these guys. Maybe a little bit more because I've played quite a few games recently off camera and also some that I have recorded and will show you guys soon. I've been playing with some guys who are pretty good. They, they have decent rankings and they are teaching me a lot, but I, I like this from Suntir. Um... I believe he took out these snipers over here with the uh, M728CV, which is essentially an M60 with a British howitzer on it, on it, and it is really good at taking out infantry in buildings. And he actually has two of them over here, and then he's moved up troops into this objective, which very smart move on his part. You can see that Wolf over here does not have much defending it, and he's sort of got like a panic move over here. Maybe not a panic move, maybe it was predetermined, but moving up a Toe 2 in a Blackhawk, and then he's moved his Apache in. Probably taking out that CV. Uh, I don't know if it properly hit it, but it did stun it. That was a solid hit. And then this should take it out. And then these shoots in, out in the open, even if they're in the building, would get absolutely demolished. Um, this is a lot of firepower coming his way, so this push pretty much stopped. However, these guys here, absolutely fantastic spot. If we go over and look at what uh, Suntur can see, he's got great vision with those guys, and he can actually see those dragon teams over there. Whereas Wolf, really, all he can see, he can't actually see much. He doesn't have a lot of recon out, to be honest. He has the sniper over here. He did have the sniper in the building earlier, but now he's he's pretty blind. And I think that is really important in this game is you want to be able to see what your opponent is doing. The more information you have at your disposal the better you are at buying the right troops and moving the troops in the correct locations. Now, I would probably move this 155 closer to the supply point so it's easier to reload. I wouldn't put it right next to it. But I would put it, you know, in this general vicinity so it could move back to the supply point to resupply. That's probably a good idea over here. These guys... I mean, he could... It'd be spotted right there, but that's if Wolf is actually paying attention to the split second where these guys would cross the road over here. But if he could get these guys out and then maybe into this building or even over onto this uh, line over here, he'd have some good vision on this flank. Uh, both sides sort of content with where they are. That stinger, I'm not sure where... That Totu was firing, but that Stinger is lucky to be alive, nearly caught out like that. Some scouts moving up over here. Really, what Wolf needs to do is... I mean, that Totu is in a... Uh, it's not in the worst firing position now we say about it. These, these troops are going to get absolutely blasted as... This is something that I am trying to get a lot better at. Um, and you find a lot of new players do this. He was moving those troops up into this tree line over here, but the pathing takes them down this road and uh, splits off at this road here, which is right in the path of the enemy fire. Really, you want to try and move them to this road here, then move them up through the trees. Uh, you'll see this this unit probably... Oh, he, he realized it. Very, very good on Sunter's part. I will probably cast this more from Sunter's point of view. Um, I'll let you guys figure out the reasons why, but um, I, I will try to do both players' point of views as much as possible, but 
we're going to err on Sunter's side a little bit more than Wolf's side. So just going back into the views, I'll do this every once in a while just to show this is what Sunter can see, which is not much at all, and then this is what Wolf can see, which is not much at all. Um, I will do some post-editing of the volume, hopefully uh, I do that properly. But when you go into somebody's uh, actual view, the dialogue sounds in the game are insanely loud, even though I have lowered them by a considerable amount. Uh, over here, Wolf has his 155 out, but I believe... I believe uh, it's not on any command right now. I, it might be... No, it has ammunition. It's reloading. Not sure what this one is doing. But I believe he starts doing counter battery with his own 155s. In the middle, he's just moving up troops to this tree line. Not a terrible idea, but really those trees can't see Jack, so he might be better just sitting in the middle. He is pushing up over here with the Command Abrams, and he has some mech rifles moving up. Really needs these guys moving up with him. He just gave the attack order. Um, he knows it's safe up to here, so I would have probably moved the dragon up into the building, dismounted them in the building, uh, but probably like a shift order, like move, move, dismount. Uh, this dragon over here really needs to get into a better position, this tree line would be pretty good for that dragon. Ihawk is okay, but a little bit um, far back, but the Ihawks aren't easy to move once you have uh, gotten rid of their vehicle. As a new player, um, Ihawks are not easy to use as a new player. Uh, I, I find Ihawks to be something that players with much more awareness on the battlefield and much better micro are good with because really what you want is you don't want to sell off the IHOC's uh, IHOC's transportation because you do want to move them a little bit more because they're very prone to being counter batteried. I have played games against some very good players that uh, my IHOC's have just absolutely disappeared because they fire once and the enemy notices that they fire and they have all of their artillery fire upon it. Now, over here, Wolf is planning something cheeky, but if we look at Sunter here, he can see those guys. He can absolutely, in fact, it's like one of the only things that Sunter can see. So really, I mean, Sunter is moving troops over here, but Sunter has to believe that these helicopters are moving over here, but yeah, Sunter can see those, so this should not be a surprise whatsoever to Sunter. Uh, this stinger hopefully gets a shot off, well, I say hopefully, hopefully for Sunter. Did hit the Apache, so the Apache has to move off. Uh, these guys need to dismount ASAP. That PVAD's a little too late to properly stop this push, so Sunter did didn't notice it, just didn't really have any forces to properly uh, push it back, and that is going to be a problem. However, that being said, Wolf has this push going on, but if he doesn't support this push, he's... it's just gonna die. So, what I would like to see is this Abrams moved up, this Apache moved up, um, this Conkers is in a terrible position, needs to reposition but all of these guys over here, I don't know what these uh, Green Berets are doing whatsoever, but these guys should move along this tree line and help move up. This Conkers, or Toe 2, should uh, get into a better firing position, I believe. I guess it can't see that dragon. But I, I would be moving people through these trees through here to help these guys out, because by themselves... Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to help you out right now, but it's, um, they're just going to eventually get taken out without any extra support. So really needs to be bringing in more forces. These, this Apache Blackhawk 
really needs to do the same thing, move in, but now we have AA assets in the area, so that's easier said than done. This dragon over here, not quite sure what it was doing. It was facing the wrong way, and... Oh, it's auto cannon is firing at the Chinook. Okay. I was trying to figure out what it was doing, and it took out the Chinook. That is, that is quite a few points there that Wolf won't be able to recuperate. And right now, he just has four units in this zone, so really, all Sunter has to do is build up a force on the outskirts um, and even bring a force over here. He's got a mortar moving up. He's not really moving too much up, except knowing that Wolf just spent a lot of points moving into this objective, Sunter has moved into this objective and is seeking out that Humvee and trying to fully capture this zone, which is a very smart move. If you think about it, especially at lower level play, you have to figure that the opponent's micro, not top tier. Against a better opponent, like a Division 1, Division 2 opponent, this might not work because your opponent probably has the micro to do both zones. But you have to figure that Wolf is probably concentrating everything over here because that's his new push, although he has just tons of wasted forces over here, at least to me wasted. If he could support into this, he could really get a foothold, and then if he could get these troops out of these trees out and secure a foothold here, put a command vehicle over there, he would be putting a lot of pressure on Sunter, but instead doesn't really back up his attacks. Now, he is reacting to this, did bring up this uh, Heavy Hog, and he has this Chinook with the arrow rifles, but they need to dismount ASAP, because that is not the first Chinook that would be taken out by Sunter's troops. And you can see Chinook taking uh, hits from the PVADs, so good thing he dismounted when he did. But this is not enough to push back, so this was a very good move by Sunter, realizing that Wolf... You know, he's taken this, but he's not really pushing it. That gives Sunter time to... Sorry, I thought I heard an A-10. I do hear the A-10. That gives time Sunter... Uh, that gives Sunter the time to create a push to destroy all of this. Now, Sunter flies this A-10 around for quite some time. And if he just committed to an attack run on these guys, I mean, he should be able to see... Oh, he doesn't see any of them. Oh. And now... Wolf is moving in anti-aircraft assets uh, in the form of F-15Cs. Now, the F-16C, much, much better. I, I think the ECM difference is quite substantial. 30% compared to... Well, actually, I lied there. F-15C with 40% ECM, are they up-vetted? I don't know how to see that on this card. Oh, I have to not look at it there, over here. Um, interesting, I would have thought the F-16 would have been much better, but once again, going off of, uh, I'm still learning this game, so you get a noob cast of noob games, and Sunter and Wolf don't take that personally. Uh, this was a very fun game to watch. This is my second uh, watch of this, just so I could get a little bit of an idea of what's going on and make casting a little bit easier. So over here, Wolf is moving up another Totu and an Abrams, but this doesn't feel like enough over here because, I mean, Sunter is perfectly fine holding this position. And then eventually, because Wolf is not pushing over here, Sunter will retake this. And you can see Sunter is perfectly fine just pushing forward. Um, these guys, I guess, don't see each other. Uh, very, very interesting. They're, they're literally in the next door buildings. Oh, okay. No, there's one building between them. So... Not too bad there, I guess. I thought they were in literal uh, adjacent buildings. So this Abrams here 
in a firefight with these rifles and then another Abrams. Probably not the best situation here as that is one tank plus an ATGM versus. Is he going to get the smoke off? Uh, thankfully that dragon... What is the uh, armor penetration on the dragon? 18? Kind of lucky that that didn't do any more damage, although he was reversing the tank, which is very, very good. Something I need to get a lot better at. I can hear that A-10 just flying in the distance. Really, Sunter should just kind of sacrifice a unit to spot all of these guys because his A-10 is running out of fuel. So this A-10 really didn't do anything this mission. And if he was able to spot any of these guys, there is no anti-aircraft assets over here, and he should know that because his F-16 flew over this and nothing shot up at them. Now, I believe in the new patch, the Reinforcement Pack 2 with the update that went along with it, I believe the Green Beret leaders do have a stinger, so that'll change in the future, but you can see right now, as of when this game was played, no anti-aircraft assets in this vicinity, so... If he were to have uh, spotted those guys, I bet he could have had a pretty nasty attack run on them with the A-10. Otherwise, just flying his F-16 up, flying it a little too close to the front lines for my liking. Uh, probably back here would be a little bit better, just to make sure that he doesn't get hit by any uh, air and AA. And this is about the time when I took a good look at what Wolf had, and he is incredibly light on anti-aircraft assets. He has this chaparral over here, but that's about it. I mean, that, that really is about it. I think there is one... I mean, there's, there's not even anything else. That literally is it for his anti-aircraft assets, so he's relying solely on his air tab and his air tab isn't even that great. Uh, Wolf has, was it four F-15Cs? I say not that great. Those are absolutely phenomenal. Um, but then after that, he just has two F-4 Phantom Twos that are HE, and here comes one of them. And I don't know how many he's lost. Now, this is a good move because this can absolutely destroy his infantry in the building, but was not able to take it out, unfortunately. Oh, it's only 227 kilogram bombs, so probably not good enough to take out a Patton. Now, that is just rude that one shot from the Chaparral, two shots and a kill from the Chaparral, um, that's absolutely brutal there. You hate to see that when you are on the receiving end. Feels, feels really, really rough, but... Uh, now the A-10 coming in for a strike, and this is what I was talking about earlier. I think it could just absolutely delete these units, and we see the clusters going out, and one unit down. F-15C Eagle pretty late to the party. Probably will take out the A-10, because, oh, no, it got out of there. The A-10 is slower than Molasses, so if that F-16 Eagle could have got two rockets off would have done a lot to it, but I think Sunter's IHOCs are depleted. He needs to move this Unimog up just a tad. Maybe he... Oh, he is. Okay. It's like he can hear me. It's pretty, uh, pretty cool. Everything I say that he should do, he does end up doing. This Apache by itself not going to do what it needs to do. All of these guys, this is wasted points over here. Um, and we can pretty much figure out 65 points, 55 points. I wouldn't call these guys wasted because they are holding the ground over here, but uh, 40 points, 100 points, supply truck 25, quick fix, could have eyes over here. Um, so it just feels like, I mean, this is a huge waste. 100 points of the Green Beret leader in the back not doing anything. So you have a couple hundred points here that really late to the party. I mean, he's moving these two guys up, but they needed to be up here way earlier. These are very, very good units, um, and some of them are up-vetted 
And even if he just had them in the tree line over here, would have been good. These scouts can see these guys out in the open. I can constantly hear an A-10 when I zoom in. And there is the A-10 right there. Going for the Apache kill. And the infamous Burt. Gotta love the sound of the A-10. Uh, I, I bet the enemy doesn't love the sound of the A-10. And I bet Burt is their least favorite sound in the entire world. But uh, Sunter doing a good job here now. The one thing Sunter did not do well is he has a command vehicle right here. He could move it down this road into this tree line and move it right there and grab this objective back immediately uh, as soon as these green berets are dead he would have contested it earlier so only uh, i mean the better players than myself could probably critique this a lot more but i'm going to be fair for the level of play and the level of division that we're at just uh, a little thing that i think sunter could have done better there now wolf must have heard me he is moving more troops up but at this point, to me, it's just too little too late. This Abrams really, I mean, problem is, well, this Abrams is a terrible location. This Abrams isn't a good one. And that was devastating, that attack there. That killed a lot. Now this toe, oh, is it going to... That Abrams just got out of line of sight. That was going to be a side shot onto that Abrams from the toe. Um, these guys, I know, see, like, I don't know. I, I feel like Wolf did not put enough assets into this. And if he's not going to put assets into this, he needs to then push either the middle or this side and take something back. Uh, I mean, the battle is pretty close right now, but as soon as Sunter retakes this or moves a command vehicle into there uh that that's it for wolf he's he's going to lose because he only controls two and they are worth well i could see up here uh they'll only be worth four once foxtrot goes and sunter will have eight once he takes foxtrot so he will be he'll go up to a plus Plus four, unless I'm just really stupid at math. Um, that that's a that's a four point swing over here. Lots of munition trucks over here. That would be absolutely nasty if Wolf had artillery left. But I believe that Sunter has destroyed all of the artillery with counter battery fire, which good on him. Because I I think there was an artillery piece on Wolf's side. I'm not sure. Let me check his roster. He does have four 155s and four 107s that he can bring in by Chinook also. All right, so over here we've got the F-15C. I need to go look at this, this aircraft in the 101st tab because I am impressed at how, how ridiculous that thing is. Uh, I, you know, just on... Paper, you tell me F-15 versus F-16, I would always say the F-16 is a better aircraft, but clearly the F-15C in this 101st list are superior to the F-16, which is pretty cool. Can I actually see the card? I cannot. I, I wish there was uh, a, a way to see the individual's uh, assets that they have available and their... and the funds, but... Um, nonetheless you cannot so we have something under attack i believe oh it's these guys over here being tag teamed there's some artillery firing there's the 155 but i bet maybe not i was thinking that he had the ability to shoot them looks like he might have lost one of his uh, artillery pieces. Not entirely sure there, but for all intents and purposes, Sunter has recaptured this. He just needs to realize he has a command vehicle here that could have recaptured this zone easily just by going through this tree line. 
sitting right there, um, and he, he would have been at a plus four for a really long time. Those rifles destroyed, and with that, really, that's, that's all Wolf's hopes and dreams for this battle. Um, Sunter has an amazing, amazing front line here. Um, and it's going to be very difficult for Wolf to push through. Now he's going to try and sneak a Command Abrams in, but it's going to take a lot of ATGMs, and I think it's dead. Yep. Two, two side shots from a ATGMs, and Sunter smartly moving his troops up back into that tree line to cover the tree line. Really needs to get these engineers into that building. Lots of troops just out in the open. Uh, infantry not not very good in the open. They do need to go into the trees, into the buildings here, but you can see, I mean, kind of a, a last ditch. Well, I guess I wouldn't even call it a last, last ditch attack because he hasn't moved them forward and this stinger, uh, I mean, that's, that's devastating. Heavy hog taken out by the stinger in two shots right there. Uh, that's that's a big blow. I believe that's a hundred and ten points or maybe somewhere around there. Oh, 130 points in his list at least uh, after the patch. It's 130 points. So a little little stinger there, taking that out. You that that doesn't feel good when you're on the receiving end of that. He has all these supply vehicles out, but nothing to supply them with. And really, he needs a big push over here, which is absolutely amazing. Sunter, <laughs> you have a command vehicle right here. Move it up and capture here. You also have this Abrams right here. Just move it into the zone, man. You would uh, you would have put this game away a lot earlier, um, but you did a good job resecuring this town, minus not putting in the command vehicles. Um, but he is pushing troops forward and, you know, Wolf spamming out. Well, I don't understand the Chaparral this late in the battle. Um, the Chaparral is not going to win you anything. You need to take zones. So, like this Chaparral, really those Chaparrals need to come out a lot earlier. And... Now what you need to be doing is you need to be amassing a force over here for a push into this zone because you know that Wolf uh, uh, Soon Wolf knows that Sunter has been focusing on Foxtrot and in theory not on Alpha, although he's got decent defenses here. These arrow rifles are just going to eat an ATGM. And there they go. Dead. Yeah. I mean, this is not an easy position to attack because of all the ATGMs. Nice hit from the IHOC over there onto that Eagle. Um, that'll basically take it out for the rest of the battle. And there we go. Sunter on the plus four. Nine minutes till victory. And Wolf... Not really, I mean, these are just, he, he got out of line of sight just in time. This one though is dead. Yep. And that Bradley is going to annihilate that stinger out in the open. Uh, this Bradley doing amazing work. If he had, uh, looks like he's moving him up. Okay. I was going to say if he had a munitions truck over here, he could sell off or resupply this truck. Yeah, resupply because he has the FOB. Um, and that eagle... Yeah, just at this point don't don't have them anywhere near the front line because you know that Sunter has a lot of anti-aircraft assets and he's just absolutely pummeling your air assets with them. Five minutes left in the game and Sunter has taken a commanding lead Imagine how large that lead would have been if he just took that so much earlier. I hear an A-10 coming in. 
not sure where the A-10 is going, just flying around, dinking and dunking. Um, but basically, Simter, like, he doesn't need to do anything. And at that point, Wolf concedes, realizes he doesn't have the forces to deal with Simter there, so. Pretty fun game there, I, I will say. A um, lot more action pack than I would have thought from a Division 4 game. Uh, I really liked Wolf taking the initiative and trying the airdrop into Foxtrot. Just unfortunately, he didn't back it up. Um, let's take a look at the kill losses here. You can see Sunter at a 1.42 and a 0.7. Uh, before we go on the kills and kill and losses, I'll put up both of their lists right now. So Sunter's 11th ACAV and Wolf's 101st Airborne. And I'll, I'll put them side by side on the screen here for you guys to quickly look at. And as I said, I'll put their import codes in the description below. You can still import them into this patch and update. Just bear in mind that some things might be different from when they actually played this game. So do keep that in mind when looking at the lists and questioning some of the things. But if you look at the kill list over here, so we'll go... How should we go? I mean, we can just go by player. You can see here, that's interesting that the IHOC took those guys out. I wonder how that worked. Oh, because it took the Chinook out. Yeah, and they were in the Chinook. That's absolutely devastating. Abrams doing pretty well, taking out rifles over here f-16 actually doing a pretty good job this stinger absolutely amazing pvads did phenomenal this bradley i believe was on the left flank for sunter and i mean it got an abrams it got humvees with troops inside of it absolutely devastating and then we go down to wolf uh his toe two got some decent kills at the beginning his air did all right and then Toe 2 once again doing all right. This uh, arrow rifle is doing pretty amazing. Uh, one of his Apaches, uh, that's devastating. Command Abrams, Chutzen, Cobra, Mortar, Dragon. So that uh, Apache did really well. And then these Green Berets. I didn't see this happen. I wonder if that was that one Green Beret unit that I said, I wonder what the heck they're doing. And if they got all the way around the right flank um, to take out the M109E2, I wonder if that's what happened. He just, I probably forgot about them because I thought it was such a ridiculous maneuver. Uh, felt felt really weird. But yeah, you can see that just Sunter really taking over on the later stages. Wolf doing a good job at the beginning and sort of like early mid but once the mid game and late game happened it's all sunter all day that is just pretty devastating so that is it for this one i plan to cast pretty much all of the top eight games uh i'll i'll be in touch with sd league to see you know if that's okay he did give me permission to cast uh especially the Division 4, and he told me specifically this game would be a good one to put out there. So congrats to Sunter on making it into the top eight. As I said, this was a tiebreaker game. Uh, the winner of this made it into the top eight. Um, Wolf, he did pretty awesome. Um, just a few little mistakes, and maybe this video will help you uh, realize, like, if you, if you supported that push onto Foxtrot a little bit better, maybe you could have got a really good foothold and uh, held on to foxtrot for the rest of the game so appreciate you guys for watching uh love all of you please like comment subscribe all of that youtube jazz and as always until next time